Hi, my name is Leslie Farrell. I'm a psychologist for with Kaiser Permanente. And we have been out here. We are closing up our seventh week on strike against Kaiser. We are patiently, very patiently, waiting for them to come back to the bargaining table. And what is the reason that Kaiser is not taking care of the patients and the behavioral therapists? Well, I don't know what they're, I, I don't want to speak to what is going on in their head. It certainly seems like corporate greed, but that's just from the outside looking in. Um, what we're asking for is really not that much. We're asking for more time protected so that we can actually care for our patients ethically and well. And we're also asking for more return appointments so we don't just see you once and then um, and then see you in eight weeks. That's, That's stressful for the therapists and the patients. Oh, what yeah. does it mean to patients when you can't be seen and you have serious uh, health problems? Well, it means that they often decompensate and go into crisis and we're not able to, um, we're not able to get any traction. You know, someone comes into us with severe depression or severe anxiety, and if we see them once every eight weeks, we spend that next appointment just catching up on what's happened, as opposed to doing any actual therapeutic work. And there were some bills passed by the legislature which require them to make appointments for people outside the system. What's happening with that? Well, they're very good. Kaiser has gotten very good at providing referrals, but these often become referrals to nowhere, and a lot of the um, a lot of the burden is placed on the patient to do extensive follow up. Um, if you know, oftentimes you do have to call Kaiser several times to make sure that the referral's gone through. Once it has gone through, then you have to call the vendor, and then the vendor will give you a list of names, and then you have to call those folks to. Um, you have to call the list of names to try to find someone who is accepting patients, who's accepting patients who are like you. Um, you're looking at you know, somebody who you can actually schedule an appointment with that meets your scheduling needs in your area. So it, it can be a full-time job to actually find a therapist through an outside network. And Kaiser has lost a lot of therapists because they, one of the reasons they can't really treat properly their patients. Is that the general situation? That is absolutely the situation. Um, I, I can't tell you the number of colleagues that have left my clinic in the last two years and the sole reason is because they do not feel like they are able to treat their patients in the way they've been trained to do so. And there were some hearings uh, at City Hall of uh, patients, uh, workers, and uh, the uh, Kaiser didn't even show up at the hearing. What does that What does that say about Kaiser? Well, again, um, you know, it's it's open to interpretation. Um, it's you know, it it definitely um, begs for the interpretation that they don't care or that they don't want to have to answer to this because they actually know that all the claims against them are correct and that they don't have really a way of defending themselves. Where is the governor on that? I mean, and the attorney general, Rob Bonta, aren't they supposed to enforce laws against companies like Kaiser that violate, flagrantly violate the law? I, I've been calling Gavin Newsom every single day. I don't know where he is. I actually feel pretty abandoned by him right now. Um, yeah. He was, he was supported by NUHW and the unions. Absolutely. We've always been supportive of Governor Newsom, and we really did, um, I don't know, maybe naively think that he was going to be on our side in this, and his, um, his silence um, it is extremely disappointing, and it can be changed at any moment, and I feel like that's really what's needed to make a difference here. Um, at this point, you know, Kaiser's got billions of dollars. We don't. Um, you know, my, my colleague just calculated what we've lost you know, each of us individually, and it's, you know, about $26,000 so far that we've sacrificed. Um, but we don't want to go back without having any, without having moved the needle in any way. And there are many union members who have Kaiser as part of their union contract yes. and, and also retirees. Uh, it was reported at the hearing yesterday, uh, there are 70,000 Kaiser members who are city workers or retirees. They're paying half a billion dollars a year to Kaiser, and yet they're not getting proper behavioral care when they need it. No, they're, they're not. Um, you know, I, 
I do think that, that Kaiser, from what I have witnessed during my 13 years with Kaiser, we can do a pretty good job when someone is in acute crisis. But what we don't do very well at is preventing those crises. And there's this, um, this whole group of, of people who have legitimate uh, mental health care needs, but who don't um, who don't meet that strict criteria for being in acute crisis, and they fall through the they fall through the cracks, and they don't get any care until they are in crisis. And some patients have committed suicide because they can't get treatment. Is that true? That is true. That is 100 percent true, and, and it's tragic. Kaiser promises, or they sign a contract, they agree to provide this care. It sounds like they're not really providing the care that they promised. I would say that that's correct. Should they be prosecuted? I think that they should. Yes. I mean, I hate that. I hate that that's the route to be that we would be going in. I would rather have them fix the problem and work with us to fix the problem as opposed to get punished. But um, but we're kind of running out of options here. And how many strikes have, have you been on? I haven't counted, but I would say eight, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's been 13 years. It seems like, you know, the first five years I worked for Kaiser, I didn't have a contract at all. And, you know, we must have done, you know, four or five, you know, small strikes. We've had a few week longs, but this is the first time we've done something open-ended. I never would have imagined it would last this long. And the nurses are also without a contract. 22,000 nurses, have they responded to what's going on uh, out here on the streets? Um, the nurses did um, come out with us one day, um, maybe in about week four, week five. We would love to have more support from their union. I know that they, I know that they do support us, but they haven't, um, for whatever reasons, um, really come out and done much on the line with us. Yeah, this also, time. the stationary engineers were out for a long time, um, and they were apparently forced back to work without a contract. I mean, it seems like Kaiser is pitting one group against another. Is that? You've you know, I, I don't know that I can speak to that, but I do know that the I do know that the engineers went back after three months and they didn't have a contract and they still don't have a contract. And that's the big fear. Um, I know a lot of us do want to go back to work and we want to do what's going to be effective and we want to give back to our patients. Um, it breaks my heart that I haven't been able to talk to my patients in seven weeks, that they I did not prepare them for this. I was not prepared for this. Um, but I don't want to go back and have it be the same situation where all of this was for nothing. What can people do who want to support you? Um, they can come out to the picket lines. I want call Gavin Newsom. Call Gavin Newsom. <laughs> Tell him we need his help. Direct intervention. Um, he, has, he, has he spoken out about what's going on? Not to my knowledge. And he has a bill on his desk right now, SB 858. And it's been sitting there for about a month now, maybe even more. Um, and I'm concerned that he's planning on not signing it. Um, that would actually increase the fines for Kaiser for from 2,500 to 25,000. That could actually motivate Kaiser to make make changes that would actually matter. Um, without that, and I don't know why he's not signing it. So I would say, call Gavin Newsom today, tell him to sign SB 858, and tell him to speak out. Please. Kaiser is stalling. During the pandemic, he was at a um, dinner with the uh, Hospital Association. Apparently funders, they were giving him money. Do you have a feeling that maybe not just Governor Newsom, but the legislature themselves get money from these uh, insurance companies like Kaiser? Well, I have no doubt that they get money from these insurance companies like Kaiser. That's, you know, I'm, I'm sure that they do. Um, Gavin Newsom has also gotten significant support from NUHW and from labor. Um, so I would hope that he would not just be acting from his pocketbook. My name is Floyd Burrell. I'm a counselor at uh, San Francisco AMRS. And the uh, healthcare workers have been out here, uh, you know, therapists. Uh, for a long time. It seems like Kaiser's taken a hard line against these uh, workers. Well, you know, we can describe it hard line and no line at all. You know, with Kaiser Permanente, this is my eighth year here. And since I've got here at Kaiser, we've, I've striked every other year. It's like every other year there's a strike. I've been in the field 24 years. Before I got here to Kaiser, I've never experienced anything like this in my life. 
and I've been a counselor for 24 years. And the, when uh, people who need health care at Kaiser can't get it, what, what happens to your patients when you tell them that you know, they're not going to be able to get regular appointments or it takes a long time to get appointments? Well, see, that's hard to, to quantify what to tell the patients. Number one, we're not there. And number two, any information that's being reported from Kaiser about how the patients are being cared for, I'm going to speak personal for me, I don't trust it. I mean, I wouldn't be out here if there was a level of trust. So I couldn't speak to what care they're getting. Now, I can say some have reached out to me um, wondering about groups and, you know, when are we coming back? I can't speak to any of those. And it's supposed to be a law that a patient that needs uh, mental health care or behavioral health care is treated the same as somebody that breaks their arm or breaks their leg. Is, how is it working at Kaiser? So here's the question. You said it's supposed to be a law. It is a law. And that law isn't being adhered to. So, you know, that's when, as we as employees, as individuals who show up to care for the patients, follow what the law says, follow our license, follow our certifications. When we follow that, the question is, why is the Kaiser following what the state says is a law? And Gavin Newsom, the Attorney General Rob Bonta, should be enforcing the law. Are they enforcing the law? Well, you know what? We got to ask them that. They've been asked. It's on their desk. You know, the question is, if they're enforcing the law, why isn't the law being enforced? That's the question. It's a law. It's in writing. And there was a hearing uh, yesterday, um, City Hall, or there was maybe Tuesday, special yeah. hearing. Um, it was quite an amazing hearing. Yes, it was. Why don't you talk about what happened at that hearing? I was really impressed and just... It was great to see, quote unquote, politicians, but these are individuals that were voted as supervisors of San Francisco. I was very impressed and it, it brought a lot of gratefulness to see how they have not only felt the impact, but spoken how it's impacted them and their family. So this isn't just Kaiser Permanente employees. You know, it's individuals with Kaiser Permanente insurance, no matter what level you are or what position you're in, that's being affected. It was a powerful, powerful meeting, and um, it was great that we had it, and it was great to have such a platform to hear the concerns. And Kaiser didn't even bother showing up. We're not surprised. <laughs> We're not surprised. <laughs> I mean, do they think that they're above the law? Well, the question is not what do we think or what do I think, the question is, it's been a track record that Kaiser Permanent Day, through my experience since I've been here, have not followed what has been in place that was need to follow. So we can paint any picture you want from that. I don't think we'll be out here seven plus weeks if things were... And, you know, they, they promise that they're going to provide this kind of care. It's required under the law. You think they should be investigated and prosecuted by Attorney General Rob Bonta and the state who say that they're, they're under the law, they, they're required to? Uh, it's not what I think they should do. They should be. Let me just be frank. If I was breaking the law and I was caught breaking the law and it was documented they was breaking the law, I, as a black man in San Francisco, would be investigated. That's zero, right? But here's this conglomerate that corners the mental health and health care market. So it's not if they should. The question is, why aren't they? And it was reported at this meeting that there were 70,000 city workers, retirees, who are covered under Kaiser, um, and they're being shortchanged as well. And the city is spending $500 million a year, half a billion dollars a year. Uh, it seems like Kaiser pretty much has contempt for their client, the city, which has a contract with them, uh, they don't really care. Well, you know, it's been spoken many a times and I reiterated what you started this interview with or this, you know, dialogue with is if I went in for a broken leg, a fractured neck, there's treatment, there's follow-up, there's aftercare plan. It's equally the same with mental health and addiction. There, there's no separation to it. So when you talk about the money, or we talk about the money that Kaiser Permanente is generating from the 
the population who is paying for their services. The question is asked, why is a broken leg so different than a mental health? Well, that's the question. They're both are illness, they're both injuries, they both affect our lives in many different ways. And we have a facility, Casa Permanente, that has the ability to treat both in the same manner, however it's choosing to treat the physical part of their corporation, much different than the mental and addiction part. But that's illegal, isn't it? Yes, we do know. That's why you're out here and we're out here. How about that, Steve? <laughs> so what can people do who want to support you? Excuse me? What, what should people do who want to support you? You know what, they're, what they have been doing, just recognizing that we're out here for first and foremost the patients. That, that's this, the patients first. Everything after that comes. But we're out here to support the patient and access care. So continue to support us. Continue to support donations as you see fit. One penny is more than no pennies. And just know that we're out here for one purpose and one purpose only, the care of the patients. And, and as a therapist, how does it make you feel when you really can't give the kind of treatment that you want to give uh, to the, your clients, the members of Kaiser? And or as a counselor, e equally so, it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible to know that there's a patient, a client, who is need of support and help and they're being told on the other end of a line or, or video, I see you in eight weeks, I see you in six weeks. When we have the ability to follow the law and see within 10 days, we have that ability. You have the money, Kaiser Permanente, to hire staff. I mean, they have like 50 billion or 40 billion in the... In I think I have 40 cents in my pocket, so they got... Got a little bit more than Floyd. How about that, Steve? Well, they're getting money from a lot of yes, members to, yes, to, to provide the care. Money to build in a lot of buildings and take care of a lot of high profile patients and clients. However, uh, we are all equally. Whoever pays, pays for insurance for Kaiser Permanente should be treated equally across the board, no matter what your income, background, ethnicity, gender. It's all equal. The money looks the same. Why are we treated the same? Well, one of the supervisors uh, said, Ronan said that uh, she had to raise hell to get Kaiser to take care of her, her family. Yes. Well, she didn't only raise hell, she just had someone on speed dial, right? Not all of us has that. And she was very clear about that, you know. She was fortunate enough to have that access. However, we all don't have that access. And yes, yeah, she raised hell and she's raising some high water too, so I give her mad props. And, and the Kaiser executives refuse to show up. Do you think they should be subpoenaed by the city? Oh, you know what? I, I'm not a legal person, but uh, it's not what they should do. It's what the law permits to be done when the law is broken. How about that?